Good morning and welcome to People Online. This time we intend to do a series on HR analytics. The scope, however, is restricted to the very basics with an emphasis on applications, particularly those kind of applications that require less resources to run and perhaps can be best described as low hanging fruits. With this, we move on to session one, which has been titled About HR Analytics. Session 1 about HR analytics. We go into the content. There are six subtopics here. We begin with the definition. Then we look at three types of analytics descriptive, predictive, and prescriptive. Then we look at why one should use HR analytics, what are the advantages, what are the difficulties in using HR analytics would come up next, and topics which are there in a course on HR analytics, and finally career options that HR analytics promises to offer. Let's go into the definition. What is HR analytics? Well, it's a subject that advocates the use of analysis of data related to human resources. And this is all for aiding decision making. From a conceptual standpoint, HR analytics can be broken down to three categories or branches. These are A, descriptive analytics, B, predictive analytics, and C, prescriptive analytics. We go into the three types of analytics. We'll try and look into each one of the three with a little more uh, uh, or a little higher level of detail. Descriptive, analyzing HR data to acquire greater insight about the present. Example could be analysis of attrition data to identify the units and locations that are experiencing high attrition. Predictive, analyzing HR data to acquire greater insight about the future. Typical application could be analysis of the risk of attrition, predicting who amongst the employees are likely to move on. Prescriptive analytics is analyzing HR data pertaining to a problem and coming up with recommendations to solve the same. Typical example could be root cause analysis and corrective action planning to check attrition. We go into why HR analytics should be used. Point number one, it helps to align HR processes to the demands of the business. Now, how this is done? Well, this is done by linking HR measures, KRAs and KPIs, with business results. It uses data to measure and present the performance of HRD. Example could be computing a HR scorecard. It can also help to translate a problem to a money value what kind of problem? Well, it could be, let's say, calculating the cost of attrition. It can also help to showcase an effective performance by HRD by presenting the achievement in money terms. Example could be calculating the return on investment ROI of training. Point number five, it helps HRD to continually refine HR processes. Example could be determining which campuses should one continue to hire from or which assessment method or methods need not be used anymore for selection. HR analytics, particularly predictive analytics, could help HRD to be more proactive. Challenges in using HR analytics. 
Well, the first and foremost challenge is the availability and quality of data. Point number two is logic. One has to uh, apply logic and uh, in case there's some deficiency here, uh, the tool syntax is not going to help much. The mental disposition towards analytics. There are some who are uh, probably more action oriented and they feel like uh, taking the decision quickly. Well, such uh, uh, tendencies would not help the cause of analytics. Software packages and people with the required knowledge. Well, uh, in case we have a handicap here, that could also become a challenge. And finally, a defined framework of values. Uh, this could perhaps be explained uh, through an example. A company is trying to do a risk analysis of attrition and it's trying to find out uh, who all amongst the employees have downloaded their payload. Uh, their, their payslip recently. Now this uh, seems absolutely right in some situations, may, may not look uh, right in another situation and the difference is the framework of values that we are working with. In a course on HR analytics. So we start with the introduction. This is typically the evolution and history of HR analytics. A uh, lot of emphasis here is laid on HR metrics and how HR measures get linked to business results. An important model HCM21 is also uh, a part of this foundation course typically. Then we'll be moving on to basic statistical concepts starting with statistical driver analysis, association versus causation, correlation and regression, going right up to methods of forecasting. And software tools, this is also a very important area with MS Excel at a very basic level with SPSS alongside. And there could be advanced courses, optional though, on R and Python and data warehousing tool or tools. And then we go into the core areas, descriptive analytics, predictive analytics, and prescriptive analytics. What are the career options in HR analytics? Consulting companies that lend, lend their expertise in HR analytics would definitely be looking for people who are knowledgeable about HR analytics. Software product companies would also be looking for such people, particularly those who offer a HRM solution with analytics. And a day is not far when most corporates would like to have a HR analyst in the HR team as a specialist, pretty much like recruitment, training and development, PMS or compensation. Well, let's summarize. We have covered the definition of HR analytics, the three types of analytics, why HR analytics should be used, what are the challenges in using HR analytics, topics in a course on HR analytics, and finally, career options in HR analytics. Thank you for watching. If you could relate to the video, if you found it to be useful, do like and share, do subscribe to our channel, press the bell button to stay tuned in for our next video. Until then, goodbye.